This is the World Championship of Ping Pong. Alexandra Palace in London, once again the venue. 64 players into the group stages, only 32 will emerge and go into the knockout phase of this competition. London is once again the host city and the opening session sees 64 players enter the group stages hoping to emulate the heroic performances that defined the 2017 tournament. First finalist is Yan Wing out of China. Amazing finish. Can Fleming win his first match point? Yes, he does. 16, 10, game Alex one. Fleming through to the final. So match point 16, is off. Yan is the new world Yan. champion. Yan Weihao beats Yan. Alexander Yan. Fleming, wins the trophy, new world champion. The role of honor features just five players. The early years dominated by the Russian Maxim Shmirev, who then fell to Englishman Andrew Bagley. He won back-to-back -back titles before Yan Wei Hao stepped in to claim last year's crown. The format remains the same. We start with group matches, eight groups of eight players. Two wins and you're through to the next round. Each match is the first of 15 points, the best of three sets. One double point ball per player per match. Beyond that, it's the knockout stage for the top 32. Only the final is extended to the best of five sets. Plenty of action on the opening day. A selection of nations sees the popular Matt Ware in action, but we start with the defending champion, Yan Wei Hao, who faces Dai Sichuan. It's all level after the opening two sets. Commentary from Colin Wilson and Tony West. Best of three, this is. One love. And here we have Sichuan leading in the whole match again. One all. You just get the feeling if that Sushuan really gets it together here, that, that he's got them, he's got the beating of Yan. I think Yan's beautiful control, but the extra pressure when Dai is One, playing well two. could take him through. Yeah, it's all going to be how Sushuan reacts to the pressure now in this environment. Yan, of course, has been through this last year and proved he can come Three. through these pressure One. situations. It'd be interesting to see just how Sushuan deals with it. But he's obviously a top, top player. Well, it's great to see someone giving the world champion such a great run for their Three, money two. within five minutes of them entering the championships. Yeah, just one game away from an a, a amazing shock on their first, first match of the day. Yeah. Three all. So in the double elimination format that we use, it means that they've got to win That's two. A in their group to go through. If you lose two in your group, you're immediately out of the competition. So this doesn't determine who Three, goes through four. and who doesn't go through. But if Yan doesn't win this, he'll put him in a very, very dangerous spot in his next two matches. They'll need to win one of his next two. In fact, two of both of his next two to go through. Is that right, Tony? Yes, Five, that's absolutely three. right. And of course, he'll also lose his number one seed position. So it could affect you know where he, where he comes out later. Right, if you finish second in his group, third in his group, fourth in his group. Then he'd come out, maybe play a big seed in the last 32, even Five, if he does go through the four. group. Good point, Tony. Anyway, long way to go still in this in this game, but Sushan just keeping his nose ahead at the moment. That's good from Yan. It's so four, deep, six. he got the ball up, but then he just missed the forehand finish, top of the net and off the table. And it's a two-point gap. Both players now have used their double-point ball. They don't get another one each game. It's just one per match. That's, uh... So dangerous territory for Yan. That's a nice backhand down the line to Shishuan's forehand. Five, six. It's interesting. There seems to be quite a, a, an impact on the serve in this game because I think Phil Sushuan struggles with that little drop short serve. And he tends to pop it up, although, of course, Jan didn't listen Seven, to me, five, went wrong and lost him the point. You're cursed already, Tony, this year. 
OK, so they change ends. What's interesting here, you'll see they've left their bats on the table, uh, but in this form of the game, they leave the bat where it was. The bat belongs to that end of the table, so when they go around to the other end of the table, they pick up the other bat to make it absolutely fair Seven, in terms five. of the equipment they're using. So they're now playing, if you like, with each other's bat to make sure there's no advantage to one player or another with the equipment. Backhander back in again. Dai going down the six. line, which is probably a good idea, but Jan dealt with it so well across court. Dai putting the forehand block off the end of the table. One point in it. And you just get Seven the feeling that Dai just needs a slightly stronger backhand with his penhold style. It's really important to be able to play over the top and through the ball. Yeah, I hope he hasn't tightened up there. Just, just didn't really give a lot on those last couple of points. He kind of put that backhand into play. Eight, didn't didn't do enough with it. He didn't stretch Jan wide. He didn't get enough depth. You know, he needs to be positive with that backhand. Yeah, did it again there for you, Tony. That's a lower one. And now forehand to forehand. Oh, what a brilliant forehand Eight, down the line oh. from Dai Sichuan. Forehand down the line into Jan's backhand. Jan's got a great backhand, but he was stuck away from the table at that point. Yeah, look how early he takes this winning one. Just moves in, takes it a fraction early, takes all the time Never. away from Jan. Nothing in it at this stage. Well, I feel vindicated, Tony. I said I didn't think it was going to be a walkover for Jan. And it certainly is giving him a lot, Nine, a lot of trouble. Yeah, it looks good for the tournament, doesn't it? When a qualifier is, is this good, we could see some incredible quality matches this weekend. Yeah, every year we say that we think that the standards improved another notch, and I certainly think, having been to the last chance qualifier, I think that's the case. You can see the trouble Jan's in there against someone who's not only a last chance qualifier, but a first reserve as a last chance qualifier. That's caused by Mike Ma Ma Marsden of Wales sadly not being able to no, attend no. at the last minute. His wife's not very well, so we wish her and baby well. Um, so Dai takes his opportunity, and he certainly is taking his opportunity now. Well, what a first match. 9 all. Final end. Let's see how we go. That's a nice backhand from Yan, but he misses Nine, the second ten. backhand. A little bit nervous, maybe? Yeah, maybe. He didn't miss many of those last year, that's for sure. That, that was uh, probably his, his big weapon. Yeah. So coming up next, the more matches 11, in this group. Nine. We've got an Englishman, an American, Serbia, Russia, Romania and Germany all to follow. Matt Ware of England is up next on this table. They're all in the same group and they'll also be playing some of these players. Depending on who wins and who loses in the early part of the group matches, your draw and changes. Ten. But Sushuan, two point lead now down to one point. Yan certainly had a scare. Net serve. So when the ball hits the net on the service and goes over and onto the table, they take it again. And here he goes. And they were saying on Thursday in the last chance qualifier that Dai certainly Eleven gets some all. kick on that serve. It kicked, it kicked up and it kicked sideways more than it would just with gravity. Yeah, terrific point there from Jan Colin. It was really brave. Just ball. It could easily have played another backhand, but he decided to run, run round and hit the forehand really hard. Of course, took the point. Well, 11. And that's two on the trot. Jan back in the lead. Well, Sushuan looked uncomfortable and then pulled it out at the last minute in the second game. Let's see if he can raise his game again. Oh, he gets the lucky net cord. Yang gets one back. Both playing forehands now, sometimes from the backhand side. 11, And Sushuan struggling there so far away from the table on his backhand side. That's usually a difficult place for a penhold player to play from, away from the table on the backhand. So, two points, Jan, now from, from victory in this first match, holding on against a very, very nasty opponent here. Great quality 12, from 13. Sushuan Dai. Still only one point in it. So, first to 15. 14 all would mean sudden death. Um, Next up. So, we'll take that one again as well. So it's not a mistake from Jan. Ball hit the net on the way over, so take it again. 12-13. Well, what a great match we've had to start off this championship, Tony. 
Yeah, it certainly has been. And another great rally. Oh, my word. 13 all. And Dyke pulling it off at the end again. He's a real fighter, isn't he? He's, He's fantastic, really is. isn't he? Look at this, the backhand, then he runs around, decides to go for the forehand, backhand again, forehand again. Great control and power. 13 all. Both men, two points away from victory. Ooh. 14, 13. Well, he had a chance Rindled there. His, nose his, his that return one. was really low, and the um, backhand was quite short, actually, and sat up for Dyne. He just sprung it too quick and put it in the net. Match point, Jan. And there it is. 15, Jan does Game manage to hold on. Game two, zero. Shran looks like he's enjoyed that first experience. Welcome back to London for the World Ping Pong Championship. It's the opening day and plenty of action as 64 players battle down to the last 32. Andrew Bagley, a former champion, has just won his opening match. Another seeded player, Gavin Rumgay, has also negotiated his first match with a comfortable win over Dane Jesper Niedergaard. Another win for Rumgay puts him into the last 32. Crucially, it's all about winning two group matches. Plenty of big names have made the perfect opening. Former finalist Alexander Fleming and Chris Doran amongst them. And joining them, Lubomir Piste, who beat junior player Aljay Vilena of the Philippines. There's also confirmation of Rumge and Bagley's wins, but back to action in Group A and confirmation of Jan's opening win and a tense encounter between Matt Ware and Trevor Runyon. All level after the opening two sets. Commentary from Colin Wilson and Tony West. Fast serve cross court from Runyon. One nice low. follow up. He's happy with that back end. Repeated it after the shot was played. That's more like it. Says for himself, I think. Oh, a short serve to the forehand. Net serve. Just click the net. They'll take that one again. One all. That will take that, and that looks more like relief than joy at the moment. So maybe humbled a little bit by the second. All credit to Trevor for coming one. back. Wonderful finish at the end of that game. And neither of these players are the most powerful players. Both mix control and power. So Trevor plotted his way back into the match very well. Oh, that's a beautiful forehand. And Trevor, that was a fantastic three. play away from the table from Trevor. Came running in, but Matt attacked again. That was such a great flick that Matt played from that shot because uh, Trevor was expecting the drop shot and Matt just flicked it aggressively deep and there was nothing Trevor could do to get his body yes, out of the way sir. and play a shot to it. Trevor serving short to the forehand again. That's a beautiful backhand. Two, That's how you can see he played the backhand down the line. Got Matt running across to play his forehand from the forehand side. Well played, Trevor. So back within one point. Okay. Four two. Not quite. Hit the top of the net and off. Four two to Matt Ware and service to come. So quick towel down to make sure there's no bat's not loose in his hand with any sweat that's on his hand. Remember they're given the bats, they don't bring their own bats. So there's no advantage three. to any player from the equipment. Fast serve across court. Trevor four very all. happy to run around players' forehand. And that just may be a little bit too far away from the table sometimes. Maybe. I think he tried to do the right thing and go for that switch down the line, but uh, just didn't quite bring it down quick enough. Yeah, and Trevor running around, getting his forehand in much more now, much more positive. Five, and you four. see on that last shot, he slips and thought he might have to play left-handed instead of right-handed. So good forehand, another good forehand, slips there, and then actually goes to change hands. And some players can do that and get the ball in if needed. But he'd done enough already. So he's 5-4 in the lead. That's a good aggressive backhand flick there from Matt. Trevor looking to get his forehand in, but Matt just got too much on his flick. Um, drew obviously the error from Trevor there. Forehand to forehand down the backhand diagonal now. Both 
tempting each other to play Five, down the line six. to the forehand. In the end, I think Trevor, Trevor went for one down the line, and Matt couldn't play the forehand across court. Nothing in it, really. Oh, Trevor's pitting from back Seven, there. You'd five, think he might have chopped it, that's what he was doing earlier, but he was actually driving the ball hard from away from the table. Great play from both players. I thought Matt had won the point twice there. That's uh, uh, an excellent rally. Yep, should be ends here, halfway through the third game. So, change of ends, change of bat. Seven, five. Leave a little bit of sweat on the handle for the other person, I would. <laughs> but they can towel it down. <laughs> I'm looking for every little advantage I can get these days. Oh, and he's, Trevor slipped again. That's twice. Seven, six. That might become a worry for him. It's not good if you don't feel mobile and solid on your feet. So as he plays this ball wide, there he goes, slips again. Staring at the floor. Clearly lost some grip on the floor there. Interesting. I wonder what he's saying to the, to the referee. Uh, uh, I've played on this floor. I didn't find it was slippery at all, but um, whether there's a damp patch somewhere, is that what he's thinking? Maybe yeah. Matt's sweat left there for, from of, the previous half of the end. Yeah, a little bit of perspiration from earlier on. Can just All you need is about three or four drops together, and they can combine when your foot slides across them. So Matt going for not leaving Seven, sweat on six. the handle, but flat sweat on the floor maybe coming. Well, he's outwitted me on that one. 7-6 and serving for Trevor Runyon. He's done so well to get back into this match. Now Matt must be worried. I think Seven, Matt needs oh. to put any worry aside, completely forget that he was ever up in this match, and just fight for every, every single point, respect the opponent for what he now is, as opposed to the uncomfortable Trevor Runyon we saw the, in the early part of the match. He's clearly warmed up, beautiful strokes. I think Trevor more comfortable away Eight, from, the, from the table than Matt is, but Matt's still driving the ball hard from close to the table. Yeah, he was brave here, Matt, wasn't he? He went for the forehand down the line quite early in the rally, and that's a difficult shot, did really well. Got Trevor back from the table and defending, and from then on he always looked like he was going to take the point. Oh, that's an oh. absolute beauty from Trevor. Forehand from the backhand corner, and that was more of a loop shot than a, than a classic counter-hit drive. Yeah, he gets quite a lot of air on some of his shots, doesn't he? Look at that, really kicked up off the table. Yeah. Great shot. Which just goes to show they are using the top spin that they can get on it. Eight, and then nine. Matt's using the top spin, not away from the table, close to the table. Again, a bit of air on it, but loads of power. That's what, a beauty. What a great shot. I think he's quite happy about that. Look at that. He was really pleased with that shot. And that might signal a change of energy and focus. Oh, left-hander from Trevor Runyon, he takes the point, I can't believe that. He had to swap hands, play a forehand with his left hand, We went over, Matt played a soft shot, and it was too soft, went in the net, and now it's 9 all. Well, it was an interesting nine. change of hands. I think he thought Matt was going to go wide, but then he went back to the body, and he had to play it when he could easily play the backhand with his right hand in the end. Absolutely amazing stuff, Trevor Runyon. But Matt, you can see now, he's just got himself a bit more aggressive. 9-11. Just a little bit, that's great. Come on, come on, Matt. <laughs> Giving it everything there. Let's see what Trevor can do now. Misread the serve here. Probably a tiny amount of topspin that Matt managed to get on that, and you see it fly up off the uh, forehand touch shot that Trevor tried to play. Yeah, so for the up-and-coming players that are used to practising short play, with these bats, you really have to keep the angle, o angle of the bat over the top of the ball when you want to play it short. It's quite different. Good focus from Matthew Ware. Nice forehand, and he's getting back into it now mentally. He's remembered how much he wants this, that's for sure. He's really fired up. What he needs to do now at the end of this game is stay positive. He mustn't do what he did in the last game and drift away from the table. Great stuff there from Matt. 12-9. That's a beautiful backhand down 12, the line. Trevor's 10. having none of it. Calm. Back to 12-10. So Matt fiery now. Really focused. Look at that determination. Real purpose in his walk now. Bit of thought. Calm it down. Decide what serve to do, and he's gone for the big forehand again. Is it going to go on? No. 13. He did catch the top of the net, but what a you know great aggression there from Matt. Trevor played a decent backhand, to be honest, and Matt just pounced on it with his forehand from the backhand corner. 
So both players increasing the pace, increasing the frequency of the forehands they're playing. Matt's again back to two points away from victory. And that's match Down point. 14. Match point to Matt Ware. He's managed to find something and separate the scores between him and Trevor. Now 14-10. That gives him match points. Happy yeah. with that. And can he do it this time? He had, of course, quite a few match points in the he previous was, game. Yeah, he's 14 turn up before. Yeah. And there is and Matt Ware takes it. He's through win. his first match. Matt Ware winning a tight encounter. More action coming up after the break. Welcome back to the opening day of the World Ping Pong Championship. In Group E, former quarter-finalist Martin Grunwald has lost out to China's Ji Chen. In Group E, Jerome Vitel of France triumphed 15-5 in the deciding set with Russian Roman Puchkin. Two-time champion Andrew Bagley didn't have it all his own way against Dwayne Schwarzer. He lost the second set but took the third to book his place in the next round. And here's how Group E looks at this stage. Only Bagley confirmed for the next round. Two other players unbeaten and looking for that crucial second win. The bottom four, Grunwald, Hazus, Lee and Puchkin feeling the pressure. One more loss and they are out. Back in Group A, defending champion Jan is into his second match up against Matt Ware. Both with opening wins, Jan made it two out of two. Ware under pressure to win his one remaining match. A look at the results from Group A. Jan, the only confirmed player for the second round. Plenty of others with one win under their belt, as shown by the yellow card next to their name. Time then for more action in the clash between Serbia's Stefan Kostadinovic and Germany's Evgeny Milchin. Commentary from Tony West and Colin Wilson. So off we go. That's a nice backhand down the line. Forehand down the line. Backhand across court. Forehand across court from the backhand corner. Oh, and he tried to get extra topspin on that last one. Didn't quite work for him. Ball comes up. Just tries to get extra spin. Love to. So a bit of desperate retrieving there in the first rally from Milken, but... Love three. Yeah, it's possibly about how she's love three at the moment. And that's... Four love. I remember Kosta Dinovic had a bad start against William Maybanks, actually. Went four, five, four or five one down. Um, so I won't count, discount him just yet, but it's a really strong start from Milken. Yeah. One Kosta Dinovic, quite happy to play backhands from the forehand side. Two, five. Okay, backhand across court and then walk miles off the end, that one, wasn't it? Just goes to show a very, very tiny change in your body action can make a massive Five, difference three. in the direction of the ball and the height that the ball that comes off your bat. Yeah, and in these early stages, if your hand tightens a little bit too much as you hit it with nerves, Six, it three. can make the ball fly sometimes. Indeed it can. We both hit balls Four, off by further than that, Tony. Far too regularly. That's why they're there and we're here. I think. But, uh, Four, seven. That's a pretty co confident start from Milken. In classical ready position, Milken. Stuck away from the table. Nice backspin. You see the touch on that one. He's not having to dig into the ball too hard. Nice control. Kostadinovic four. forced to go for the, the big shot. We know that Kostadinovic likes pace coming at him. And so Evgenia, no doubt, has seen that, and he's mixing Nine, up the pace, uh, just like Will Maybanks tried to do against him. Yeah, it's interesting to see. I imagine that he would have watched the Maybanks game against uh, Stefan and probably realised that he can go back quite safely without the danger of uh, Stefan hitting the ball straight past him. Yeah, and that might be a reason that cost to devote Kosta Dinovic hasn't made the last 16 yet, just that people know that they don't always have to play the ball fast. Six, nine. They can put a slow ball in without so much risk it's going to get clouded past them. But beautiful player, Kosta Dinovic. Really smooth. 
ball travels through the air so consistently. Very, very few errors. That was faster from Costa than over. He quickly went faster. Six. And Milken read it, got it back, and said, no, that's not fast, this is fast. Yeah, that looks really classy, wasn't it, from Milken? Yeah, show, really showed what top player he is in that rally. Yeah, and why he won the German qualifier to get here to this Seven, championships 11. again. That's a nice back and down the line from Kostinovic. And now he is pulling out the power more. 13, 7. One just off the side. Struggles with that, doesn't he? You saw there that Milken's defence wasn't low. It really set up for uh, Stefan to put it away. 14, but he, seven. Still, he still couldn't bring the ball down quick enough. Yep. And that gives game point to Evgeny Milken. It's a beautiful backhand down the line. Evgeny, though, is moving. 15-7 game. Really Milton. good. Got across that forehand like it wasn't a problem. And then two more shots. And then game to Evgeny, Goldfinger, Milken. What is Kostadinovic to do when Milken is winning the point in the slower rallies and he's winning the point in the fast rallies? Yeah, he's got, got to be as consistent as he was in his first match against Maybanks, where he won the points, was just keeping that ball on longer than Maybanks. He's not going to win with power, but he is very clever, so he's got to use positional play. He's very good at a quick switch down the line to try and catch his opponent out of position. One a little bit faster from Kostadinovic. If that's a signal for what he's going to try and do. One old. Kostadinovic is a very individual star. I love the way he just gives it a little hop when he plays, when he tries to hit his forehand a little bit extra hard. There it is again. Oh, what a return Two, from Milken. That was deceptively good. Bent the ball around the side of the table. Very, very good from Milken. Oh, that's a, that's a very, very hard shot from Kostadinovic. One, three. But, to be fair, Milken gets a lot of the hard ones back. Two, so three. Milken, very, very good retriever as well. He's a good, uh, consistent, aggressive player. Yeah, he is, Colin, and I think where that's to his advantage is he's not Four, worried if two. it pops up a bit high, because uh, Kostadinovic hasn't punished him when it has. Yeah, good word for it. Can Kostadinovic Five, punish, two. or if he can't, can he just keep the ball on? even longer than he is at the moment. Either way, might get him back into the match. That's a confident look back down the line. I think the players are just starting to warm up their range, and that means that they can play very fast and go down the line and not have to go across court. Difficult to do. 2-7. But when they start getting their execution going, again, it gives them another pump of confidence. 8-2. Yeah, he just has that slight bit of extra pace on every shot, really, and he's, he's positioning it even better as well at the moment. He's getting more depth than Stefan. Oh, not that time, though. <laughs> Off the edge, good enough for Stefan. 8-3. Pull it back to 8-3. FJN, very, very accomplished start to this second game. Yeah, nice control. Three, nine. Nice combination of control and power without making mistakes as he switches from one to the other. Quite unusual. Quite classy. Four you know, nine. Reminds me of Lubomir Piste. Double point ball, Kostadinovic. Okay, it's so a double point ball. Kostadinovic trying to drag himself back into this second game. He's already five points adrift, so he really needs this. Kostadinovic to serve with the double point ball. There he gets it. Yeah, good serve, wasn't it? Got it really deep, close to the white line, yeah. and that forced the error from Milken. Very low. As yeah, Darius was fast. saying, yeah, when it's fast and low and flat, it's quite hard to pick up. Dan six. But he stopped the rot there. Evgeny, 10 six. See here, returns with a slow serve, and then. Very, very big attack. Big commitment to that one. Seven, ten. It's an interesting service, isn't it, Connie? He doesn't really try to do that much. He's just happy to put it in play nice and short. Yeah, Kostinovic does the same serve to the backhand. 
fast into eight, a James ten. backhand. Well, he's managed to turn it around to 8-10. It's not over. 11-8. Jenny knew how important that one was. 10-9 would, would have been nervous times. 11-8 helps him just to have a little bit of clarity. him into it, said, you go there that and I'll take ball. it back. Mr. That's Merchie. got to be one of the best shots of the day. Best attack from away from the table that we've seen all day. Yeah, Fantastic. that's what I was thinking, Colin, and he's rubbing it in now by using his double point ball, so if he takes this, he'll be on to match points. Oh! Again, Eight, delighted. Great body language. 14-8. Seven match points to Evgeny Milkin. That'll mean that we see Kostya later in a survival mode to try and stay in the competition against somebody else. That'll mean that Evgeny goes through to the last 32. A bit of, a bit of extra prize money. with his second win, the German through to the last 32. Welcome back to Alexandra Palace in North London and the opening day of the World Ping Pong Championship. Liang Zhue has just got his second win by beating Vladislav Kutsenko over three sets. Richard Gonzalez joins him after a surprise win over China's Shen Jian Yu. Three tough sets, but enough for the man from the Philippines. Thomas Sadelek earned his green card via a win over John Murphy of Ireland, which gets him out of Group B. No such joy for Villela, who lost to Hebert and is out. Gilles Hebert looking for a second win to turn that yellow card to green. The list for the last 32 starting to take shape and plenty of big names through. Among them two-time champion Andrew Bagley, the defending champion Yan Wei Hao, who joins five other Chinese players progressing through from the group stages. Richard Gonzalez in the mix, along with Christopher Doran. Plenty more hoping to join them, and plenty of group action still to come. In Group A, only two men through, Milchin and Yan. A handful on yellow and just one out, the American Runyon. A crucial match going on at the moment between Maybanks and Farkas. Both lost their opening games. This is now a must-win match. Commentary from Colin Wilson and Tony West. And then a positive start there from Will. One low. Black got the first two back, couldn't get the third one back. And Will knows he's fighting for his life here. Touch the edge. Yeah, Love just caught two. the edge. And so important for Maybanks to get a good start here. Obviously, already a game down. So we're really pleased to take those opening two points. Yeah. You can't see from that angle, but clearly touch the edge when you see it from the other camera view. One, two. Well, this would be an upset, I think. Two seen all. Vlad mature over the years. He was only 14 the first time he came here. He's qualified in his own right. Will Maybanks will be desperate to Three, hold two. on, get a little bit of a lead, scrape through this second game, give himself a lifeline. Otherwise, he's going home soon. Two. So, interestingly, all points gone with serves so far in this game. Three, four. Four all. Is that right? Every point's gone with serve. Yeah, so far in this game, and that was a good serve uh, from Vlad. He managed to get a little bit of side spin on there, and it just made the ball move sideways on the last bounce, and Will Miss hit it. Yeah. 
<laughs> and Vlad's happy again off the side of the table. You can see he looks like a man that knows he's got a chance now. And he goes into the forehand, and that's just Five wide. Four. Vlad's happy about that. Six, Same five. again. Now it's Vlad that's running around playing his forehand attack down the line. Got the confidence to do so, and Will is struggling to pick that up and play it across court. Yeah, that's it. I was Six, just going to oh. say, I'm wondering if Maybach is going to start to be more positive on the backhand, and because uh, Vlad's had a lot of success now when Will's gone back from the table defending, um, and he did it there, took the point. So I wonder if that will continue. Six, seven. Yeah, and Vlad just keeping ahead. I was going to say, for all of that, Will is, is staying with him. Eight, but six. again, a two-point lead on Will Maybanks' serve. So that's not good for, for Will Maybank. Six all, and nine, now he's nine, six. six down. Two of those are on his own serve. Yeah, he really has tried to change it, hasn't he? There again, you saw a backhand topspin rather than the backspin he'd been using. Um, just missed the follow-up forehand. So he is trying to change things. Seven, nine. Vlad going a long way around the backhand side to get his forehand in. Look how far he has to go around there. Didn't quite make it. And he's not going to Eight, get that nine. He's a very cautious smash there from Will. Didn't want to make any errors with a very, very fast shot. He knew that Vlad was struggling. Great shot from the young Romanian. Eight. That's the shot of the match from him, especially given that it was 9-8, and that would have brought it back level. Beautifully delivered from Vlad. Again, I think he saw Will go to the backhand, played it across wide of the forehand. So what I really like is the peripheral vision that Vlad has got. It was also excellent disguise, I thought. I thought he was going to backhand as well, and it just turned really late and made it go down the line. Oh, and then Will and does it back nine. to him. Wonderful, wonderful. Both looking out of the corner of their eye. Sees Vlad go around, plays it wide of his forehand. Left him standing. Again, does it again, and Will has about the 11. fourth one that he's tried to counter across court and not quite made. So, 11-9. Mr. Maybanks. A double point ball from Will. He needs to get this back on level terms. He's really desperate for this point. Yep. Got the double pointer. Certainly, it can give you a lot of relief there, can't it? You get those two points. Not made it. Nine, twelve. Now he's got to fight back three points away from going out of this year's championship. Goes for the big one. Went for the very big one. Now he's got to slog his way out of it. Think his way through. He's gone back to backspin again, away from the table defending, and then the forehand topspin. Three consistent well, forehand ten. top spins, all to Vlad's forehand, and got through in the end. What a fantastic rally. Yeah, that's what he's got to do. He's got to be brave. Look at those forehands. Great, really, real power coming out from Will there. 12, 11. Yeah, I think brave's a great word for it. He's playing a younger man, a smaller man, well, a less experienced oh. man, but he knows how talented this fella is. Could that have been a sign of nerves? You see that's popped up quite high, and it just looked looked a bit nervy as he played that forehand. Yeah. Oh, oh another one. 13, has Vlad hit his threshold for confidence? Can he believe that he's good enough to go through to the last 32 of the competition? I think it'd be the first time he would have done so. Oh, that's lucky. Oh, my word. Now everything's gone against him. And there's game points for Will Maybanks. And the facial expression has changed 180 degrees. Yeah, he, he must, 13, have, he must have panic now. Um, and he's managed to compose himself, pull a point, one of these game points back. Yep. And actually, he's only still two points away from winning the match. So that needs to stick with it. Oh, and there it is, 14 all. Oh. And in. In sandpaper back, World Championships of Ping Pong, 
15 points is enough. There's no two points, two points you need to win, two clear points. This is it. Match or game? Match to Vlad, game to Will. What's it going to be? Vlad has got the ball in the air and he's attacking. What a great return from Will. And he's got that one back as well. It hit the edge. What a rally. Great backhand defence from Will Maybanks. Match point down. If he takes this point, Will, that's the game and he levels the match. It's all on this one. And Vlad takes the game and the match. Game proper. <laughs> what a play to finish up. Later to have another go at getting into the last 32. And Will is out of this year's championships. And what a rally. Credit to both players. Absolutely fantastic from both of them. Look at the retrieves from Will. You don't deserve to go out, Tony, on quality that good. I do not know how he stayed in that rally that long. Um, credit to Vlad for keeping his composure. But Will, unbelievable performance in that last point alone. And to be fair to Vlad, that last one, he had to hit it hard. He went for it. He didn't make any mistake that time. No sign of nerves. And he's put it away to give himself a chance. Group A starting to take shape. Evgeny Milchin and Jan Weihau through. Maybanks and Runyon out. But alongside them, a group of players with one win and one loss to their names. The next round of matches crucial to their fortunes. Some of those matches are being played out at the moment, including the clash between Dai Suchuan and Stefan Kostadinovic. The server set up in this best of three match. Commentary from Colin Wilson and Tony West. Love one. So what can Dai do now? His backhand's not so powerful. One all. He's got a choice. He can play more backhands down the line. He can try and play harder. He can change the pace a little bit or he can run around and play more forehands from the backhand side. That's so. Yeah, what he can't do, Colin, really, is um, slow the game down that much and sort of go back and chop. Not, not with Tenhold, that's really difficult. So um, he's got to blast through Kostinovic, which he's showing isn't easy to do. Do you want? You know, we, might, we might see some deliberate kind of soft blocks from, from Dieter, just to mix up One, the pace. Three. But as you try to change the tactics and get a new way of playing, you're in danger of making a couple of errors while you're making that transition and getting used One, to it. Four. And, and when you're a game behind, that can be out, out of the game altogether. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And the thing is, Kostanovic is playing probably 90% of his shots into the backhand of Sushuan. So I, think, I feel Sushuan's going to have to start running around and playing some four ends from that side. Four, two. Yeah, either that or, or hit his backhand very hard down the line. Um, but I think you're right, if I was him, I'd be, I'd be looking to go around and play more forehand from the backhand side. He's still putting right. Stefan under a lot of pressure, as you can see. But, um, but maybe no panic, he only lost by one point in the first game. Four all. Oh, sure, there's a long way to go in this. But, uh, these are all the computations you've got to be taking into account when you decide your strategy. And that strategy needs to keep changing all the time as well. Beautiful, beautiful one. Five, four. Great count hitting from both players. Good switch from Dye. Oh, again, off the softer ball, sometimes makes an error. You know, the way I feel, Colin, is that in this sort of rally, forehand to forehand, you're going to make Sushuan favourite every time. And backhand to backhand. Much more 50 50, possibly even Kostinovic. Right. As, Five, he, as six. he does there. Yeah. Are you still sticking with Sushuan? I am, but I think he should switch more with his backhand to Six the Kostadinovic forehand. To encourage the ball to come across so he can play a forehand himself. Yeah, it's more likely to come to his forehand then, and he's likely to win those rallies once he gets onto a forehand to forehand type exchange. Beautiful. He's off balance there. Seven, Dye six. played a great ball right down the, the, the centre, the crossover between his forehand and backhand there. Onto the backhand. 
And this one, I think, there. Slower ball into the crossover. Stefan came across the, his forehand to play backhand a little bit. Just got him off balance. Balance is so important. If you can't play on balance, then you're going to start putting errors into your game. You don't have the control because your feet are not set on the floor. You don't have the stability. And Dai really turning the eight. pace now. Yeah, it's such an interesting game. Yeah, you see him take with this panel back end of it, just take it off. Eight and make Kostadovic reach forward, and that tends to make you then lift it off the end of the table. Absolutely point for point. Eight, nine. Hand it to Stefan here. If you'd have watched their earlier games, you would have made Sushuan heavy favourite. But the different style that Sushuan has, where he's coming at Stefan all the time, is really suiting him. And he's just not Nine making old. hardly any errors. That was a rare one. Yeah, so again, we set up with the, with the backhand to backhand. And then, yeah, die again playing into the crossover of uh, Kostadinovic between his backhand and forehand. Again he does it, again he does it. You can see there, he's into his backhand and into his middle. Kostadinovic came out across a heck of a long way there to play his backhand. Nine, ten. Dai eventually getting him out of position. Wow, this is absolutely point for point. Dai playing to the backhand and to the Dan all. I tend to use the term crossover rather than the middle. We're not actually talking about the middle of the table. It all depends upon where the where the body weight of the opponent is placed. Really at the playing elbow of the opponent. 11, 10. And there we saw Sushuan gamble and run round the backhand side with his forehand. Um, Stefan did really well again to get it back and stay in the point, but uh, Sushuan had the upper hand by that stage. 11, oh. A little bit lucky. Very top players tend to get those back. Um, a little bit of luck there, Stefan. Oh, he went for a bigger forehand. He's really annoyed about that well. one. He knew it was the right thing to do, and it was nearly well put, well executed. Frustration there. 12 all. So 12 all. There's nothing in it. I don't think the player's got three points ahead all the way through the second game. So, the Chinese last chance qualifier, but a player of the highest, highest standard. Three points away going out of the competition. Now two, so he's holding them there. Backhand to backhand, backhand to middle. There, into the middle again from Dyke. Tried to go wide on the backhand, went too wide. He did, but I just feel he's playing too much into the backhand. Um, where's the yeah? Where's the where's the backhand down the line into Kostadinovic's forehand? 13, 14. Still. Game point. A lifeline for Sushran. He's taken it this far in this game to give himself one game point. the same time as match point and it's curtains for Dyke if he doesn't take this point. Wow, what a close game this is. Both games gone to sudden death point and Kostadinovic with a chance here of a huge upset. What's it going to be? More consistency. These players are just so good at keeping the ball on the table. And that's it. I can't believe that Shushman died out of the tournament. Kostadinovic goes through into the last 32. What a fantastic performance. He's really pleased with that. Relief for Kostadinovic, and another who joined him is John Murphy, who, to the delight of the Irish supporters, pulled off a remarkable win over Lorenzo Ragni. A big surprise in Group E, where Martin Grunewald lost his last match to Germany's Dwayne Schwarzer. Grunewald out, Schwarzer through. In Group C, Denmark's Benjamin Sorensen came through against Poland's Filip Mlinarski. Relief for the home crowd as Matt Ware made it through in Group A against the young Romanian Vlad Farkas. 
where bouncing back from an earlier defeat to the defending champion Yan Wei Hao. Yet more names added to the list for the last 32, and the draw for that stage will see Chen play Zhang on the main table. Chris Doran also in action against Sorensen, followed by two-time champion Bagley against Brat, and the very popular Gavin Rumge takes on Russia's Popov. On the second table, defending champion Yan faces compatriot Jin. Matt Ware is also in action when he plays Richard Gonzalez of the Philippines. Plenty of interest with a wide selection of players, but no escaping the presence of the Chinese as they attempt to win the World Championship of Ping Pong.